Hi, I'm Joe Carswell from Teach Construction. Welcome back to another lesson. This one's all about the level, a really important measuring tool. Let's get right into it. Before we can go through this tool and how to use it to measure, we have to identify this condition of level. So if we were to take a flat line, a perfectly flat line, the, the association or the relationship of that flat line to the center of the earth is really important. So if we were to connect a line that ran from the center of the earth to this flat line that we're trying to measure, the relationship would be 90 degrees between the two. This is very important, and if we can achieve that, we can identify that as level. So that's the concept of level. Let's take a look at this tool that we call a level and how it can identify that condition. It's a very basic tool. It has a flat machine surface on the bottom. It has a flat machine surface on the top. And then it has a vial that we use to read that condition. So this vial is a tube that's closed. It has an oil or a fluid in it, and there is a bubble in that fluid. There's a couple of lines that we use to line that bubble up. And if we can get that, that bubble lined up perfectly between those two marks, then we know that we have level. If the bubble strays outside of those marks, we know that one side or the other is high. You can always remember this by the rule that the bubble always floats to the high side. So you might have noticed there's other vials other than this center one we use for level. Those are used to identify a different condition that we call plumb. So if we talk about level as being perfectly flat or horizontal to the center of the earth, then a plumb line would be perfectly vertical. We talked about that line that runs from the center of the earth to our horizontal line. Well, that's literally this plumb or perfectly vertical line. These vials that are here and here on this level help us to measure and identify that perfect plumb line. If we have this tool up against a surface and we're trying to determine if that surface is plumb, we can look at this vial down here and just like with our other measurement that we were making, we would expect that bubble to center between those two lines. If it is not a perfectly plumb line, that bubble will stray to one side or the other and then we'll have to adjust to get it back to that center mark. So we've identified this plumb and level at this point. This is really important when we're building. Uh, we're doing this all the time. We're trying to find or build either level for our floors. If we don't have a floor that is perfectly flat and perfectly horizontal, we can run into all kinds of problems. If we have walls that we're trying to build and make vertical, if those walls aren't vertical, we can have uh, buildings that collapse. If we're installing a door or a window, in order for those doors or windows to work properly, we need sides that are perfectly plumb and bottoms and tops that are perfectly level or they won't open and close. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you've found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. There's a lot of different lengths available for levels. Today here, I have an example of a nine inch torpedo level. This would be for smaller jobs. And then I have a two foot level. I even have a four foot level here. This is for longer surfaces. And I even have a six foot level here. This is for really long jobs. The idea here is that you wanna choose the longest level possible for the surface that you're trying to measure. This table I'm standing in front of is a little less than five feet long. So I would wanna choose the appropriate level for that. I would pick a four foot level to measure this surface. The reason is because I wanna take a measurement of the entire length. If I use a short level like this nine inch level, I'm only taking a small sample of that surface. It's really important that we're measuring the entire length to get the most accuracy. If you have a really long surface, you need a really long level. This is my favorite, it's my six foot level. And this shelf behind me here is about an eight foot length. So I could put this six foot level on it and it's going to give me a very good idea of the state of level or condition of level of that surface. 
it runs from basically one end to the other, so I get a really good accurate measurement of it. Levels are precision measuring instruments. You'll hear me say that more than once. The longer they get, the more fragile they are. This level, although it looks like it's been worked hard, uh, has been very well protected over the years. Uh, this is my personal level, and I treat all my levels as if they're precision instruments, just like your tape measure, just like all your other measuring instruments. Of course, if this level gets bent or damaged, then it cannot do its job anymore and it's no longer accurate. I have different materials that levels are made of. I have uh, an aluminum one here. This torpedo level is a combination of plastic and metal. And I also have a plastic one here. I'm not a fan of these plastic levels. They're less expensive, but they also have some flex to them. And if you're trying to measure a straight surface, you really don't want any flex in this level. It's good for certain things and definitely not as sturdy or durable as some of the metal options. If you want to make good measurements, if you want to do quality work, you need good tools. So make sure when you're investing in any of your tools, including your levels, that you spend the money and you get something that will last and it will do quality work. At this point, I want to talk about the relationship between those two conditions, plum and level. If we set up a level on a surface and we identify that plane as level, and then we set up a plumb condition over here, then we can now talk about what angle is made between level and plumb. As you see here, it's looking like something that we've already talked about. That is a tool that we have called a speed square. If you remember, our speed square has a 90 degree angle here. And if we were to measure this angle, you can see that it creates a 90 degree connection here. So we know that the relationship between plumb and level is always 90 degrees. This helps us even more when we're building because we're not only looking for perfectly flat and perfectly vertical, but we're also looking for 90 degrees or square. The last thing to talk about is a 45 degree measurement with a level. Some levels have the ability to measure 45 degrees. I can demonstrate that with this speed square as well. So if you remember, we not only have a 90 degree angle on a speed square, but we also have a 45 degree angle built in. I've got this torpedo level and even some of these other levels. This one here has a bubble at 45 degrees. So this angled vial that's here on this level can be placed in this position on the 45 degree slope and we would expect this vial to read just like our other measurements did with that bubble centered in between those marks. If we can get that centered condition, we know that we have a 45 degree angle or slope here. So there you have it, a really important measuring tool for finding plumb and level. Remember these come in different lengths. Choose the longest one that you can for the job. Treat them right and I'll see you in the next lesson.